Hello from National Geographic Education. My name is Kip Hotman, and this is Explore Classroom. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explore Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. National Geographic has partnered with Ocean Exploration Trust for three expeditions in the Hawaiian Islands aboard Ocean Exploration Trust's ship, the exploration vessel Nautilus. I'm so glad you're joining us today for the fourth and final event in our special series that we've been broadcasting live from the ship. Today, we are joined by members of the Maritime Heritage Team. Our guests are explorer Justin Dunavant, photographer and photojournalist Jennifer Adler, archaeologist Jason Raup, archaeologist Dominic Bush, young explorer Sruthi Gurudev, and educator Ashley Glickley. Today, they will share an update from the expedition and tell us all about how they will create virtual 3D models of key underwater cultural heritage sites in Maui and Lanai in order to document them and raise awareness for their preservation. Before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to Harper Elementary School, Koalinga Middle School, Carolina Christian Academy, Shepherd's Croft, Dalgetty Bay Primary School, St. Louis Gifted Center, and to all of our homeschools out there. We are thrilled to have you all here. And with that, let's get this Explore Classroom started. It's time to turn it over to the Maritime Heritage Team to share all about their expedition. Take it away, my friends. All right, thank you for that, Kip. Hello, beautiful people in the audience. It is good to see you live from the Nautilus. My name is Justin Dunavant, and I am a professor of archeology span doing maritime archaeology out here just to see what I look like on the boat <laughs> when I'm out doing maritime archaeological work and I am joined by my colleague hi I'm Jenny Adler I'm an underwater photojournalist and a lot of my work focuses on communicating science and conservation that happens beneath the surface and this is what it looks like when I'm doing a lot of this work and I'll show you this camera later today Yes, we are excited to be here to join you. We have a whole group of explorers, archaeologists, educators, and science communicators that will be coming with us live from different parts of the vessel. So you all will get to see what this, this vehicle looks like and the type of science research that we do. Now, many of you may not have met an archaeologist before. Don't be surprised. Some of you may not even know what we do, but I'm here to tell you that as archaeologists, we explore history and heritage under the water. So over the last week, we've been out here on the vessel Nautilus, and we have been doing archaeological research from this vessel. Every day, we go out on a smaller boat, and we jump off the side in our scuba tanks, we look at wrecks, and we document history. We are making 3D models, which we'll show you a bit later, and we're using those models to then show you all uh, and other people around the world the history that exists underwater. So some of the sites we've been documenting um, and taking pictures of, and we'll show you a couple of those photos now so you can see what lies underneath the surface. These are all World War II era wrecks. This is from a landing craft that we surveyed a couple days ago, and this is Dominic, who you'll hear from later, making a photogrammetry model. So what they're doing is they're swimming back and forth with these GoPros to capture video, and afterwards they'll tell you more about this, but they use a computer program to stitch the images together to make a 3D model. So we want to show you what that 3D model looks like once they stitch the images together, and it's a really cool way to explore and visualize these sites that often lie kind of hidden beneath the surface. And hopefully this will work to show you guys. It's a pretty big file. So we go down, we scuba dive on these sites, we take photographs and videos, and then we use computer models to stitch them all together to present them in three dimensions. And again, we do this so that you all can see these, but we also do this for local heritage professionals on the island so they can get a better understanding of what history and heritage exists underwater. 
This right here is an aircraft known as a hell diver. In World War II, it was used specifically uh, during the Pacific theater of the war. Oftentimes, you see planes in the sky, but they also exist underwater. And that's why we're here. Yeah, and what I love about watching that too is you can see the individual corals that are growing on these wrecks. And so you can see here some of the more white pieces, white specks on the top are entire uh, coral heads going on. So these wrecks kind of get this second life underwater as these artificial reefs. And a lot of times there's a lot of fish swimming around them too. So it's been really neat to kind of dive in on this sandy area, find this intact plane, and then see all the life that's grown around it. And we are going to take you to another uh, part of the vessel to meet some of our other Explorer team members, Dominic Bush and Dr. Jason Raup. And they're going to talk a bit about the technology that we use when we work on these sites. Jason, Dominic, turn it over to you all. Hey, guys. We're here in the ROV hangar. And uh, we are actually working on one of our ROVs that helps us uh, take a look at what's underneath the surface. Jason? Yeah, so we're in the ROV hangar on RV no our EV Nautilus, and uh, it's it's kind of a funny juxtaposition because normally the ROV that would be in this space is about the size of a Volkswagen bus. So uh, a large car that you can see these tracks that it runs on to come in and out. But for us, our operations are quite different. And so we use a much smaller ROV. You'll have to take it close. Um, a much smaller ROV. <clears throat> that allows us to drop this over the side and explore what might be on the bottom. So oftentimes we, we know that there are targets on the bottom. We know through remote sensing using uh, uh, technologies such as side scan sonar and magnetometry that we know that there will be an object on the bottom, but we wanna know whether or not it's a heritage object. So we might use something like this small little inexpensive ROV to drop over the side just to get a glimpse because it's equipped with a camera on the front, it's equipped with lights, and it also has thrusters on all sides that allow us to really manipulate it anywhere we want it to go. So that's one of the technologies that we use. And it's really, these small ROVs uh, have really revolutionized how we can explore the undersea environment um, in only the last few years. So this is an emerging technology and it's very exciting. Now, other things we'll use are <clears throat> cameras. So cameras are an archeologist's best friend. So for many years, we mapped sites purely by looking, uh, looking at the, the remains of the, the, the shipwreck or the aircraft and stretching tapes and drawing a, a picture. But nowadays we're able to use the photo models that, that uh, Jenny, mentioned and we're able to extrapolate uh site plans from those so we we use technologies like gopros uh up to several thousand dollar cameras when we can get them <laughs> um but our general go-to is a, is a gopro camera and we use something like this housing with uh with a dome port that gives us a wide angle view and allows us to capture a, a huge area in just a single photograph um, and lastly, we, we need to understand the scale of things. So um, in order to do that, we make something as simple as this. This is a, a photo, photographic scale. It's one meter in length, and it's a pretty standard uh, tool for the archaeologist. But as you see, it's really just a couple of pieces of PVC and some tape that give us 10 centimeter increments from which we can uh, determine the sizes of objects uh, uh, under the sea. Thank you, Jason and Dominic, for that introduction. That's just some of the technology that we're using. Uh, we've also got a whole slew of other camera gear and technology that Dr. Jenny Adler is, is using as well. So this is what it looks like when I'm underwater taking pictures. You kind of saw this camera rig before. It's this kind of, it looks like a little ROV almost with arms sticking out of it. And the arms are holding out these underwater lights that help light up a subject that you're photographing. Underwater, you have to get very close to things in order to take pictures of them. So I have a pretty wide angle lens on here. And so as you can see with this shark, I'm trying to get as close as possible to try to get a picture without actually disturbing the shark. So I wanna show you this in real life. This is what it looks like. 
You can see the big dome here. This is a piece of glass <laughs> getting Justin. Um, he's gotten used to this over the past week. I've been taking a lot of pictures of them. So it's important to try to document science with this so that we can show people above the water what's happening and what it's like to be a scientist. What is a day in the life like? So this year you can see the, it takes a photo through here. On the back, it has all of these buttons that correspond to all the buttons on the camera. And inside of here is a regular SLR camera that you would use to shoot above water. And you can see all these buttons on the back. You use this button to take a picture here. This is the most important one. And then all these other dials adjust things like aperture, shutter speed, ISL, all these other camera things. And what you see on the side sticking out is a light. It's called a strobe. It's just a fancy word for underwater light. And this will put a big flash of light out in order to light up the subject that you're that you're photographing and also has all these different adjustments on the back. So it's fun to be able to learn how to use your camera. It doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, just any kind you have that you know how to use to document this work being done. And it is crucial that we document this work because oftentimes we don't get to see these sites unless we get to scuba dive. All the people you met are all professional scuba divers. Uh, we recognize that some of you might be young now, but we hope that you all will become swimmers one day. And maybe if you're interested, also become scuba divers and get to experience this world with us underwater. We want to go over to some of our additional team members. We've got Saruthi Gurudev and we've got Ash Ashley Glickley. They are educators and science communicators, and they'll be telling you a little bit about some of the work that they do. Aloha, Explorers. This is Ashley Glickley. I'm an educator from Louisville, Kentucky, here on the back deck of the EV Nautilus. And you can see we are surrounded by the beautiful Hawaiian Islands. And I'm here with my friend. Hi, everyone. This is Sruti Gurdev. Um, I'm an eco-journalist, and uh, I'm super excited to show you guys what we're doing out here. So Sruti and I are on the ship to share with students a little bit about what is happening with our team while on board the EV Nautilus. The wonderful thing is we have the opportunity to share in real time all of the work of the scientists with students from all over the world. So we've spoken with students from Ghana, from Italy, from the United States, from all different backgrounds. And we're here with the, um, working with the deckhands to make sure that we're safe on board the EV Nautilus. Um, we're speaking multiple languages. We've estimated about 11 languages on the ship and many different people from many different backgrounds. So it's always really important to think about being able to work as a team and support each other as we bring the science back to the classroom. Sruthi, did you wanna talk about your magazine? Yeah, absolutely. So I run an e-magazine called An Hour in the Deep, which is all about young people getting involved in eco-journalism, which is writing about the environment, writing about climate change. And what I do is publish articles that our youth contributors um, Give, give to me so I publish them on our website. And you can see we've got our crane all set up, ready to lift Ruby out into the water. We'll be taking Ruby out in just a little bit um, onto the dive boat. We take Ruby out into the water, then out to the dive boat, and then the dive team goes underwater um, just to see some of the wrecks that we are going to explore today. So we're gonna send it back to Jenny and Justin to finish that up and ask any questions you might have. Yeah, as you can see, our team is very interdisciplinary, meaning many different backgrounds. So in order to be on the ship, you can be a scientist, you can be, you know, a geologist, an archaeologist, a marine biologist, you can be a communicator, a writer, a teacher, you know, there are many different ways that we can all work together. And by working together, it's more powerful than just one person working alone. Definitely. And our overall goal is, goal is to explore the world's oceans. There are oceans that encompass the majority of this planet, and we still know very little about what lies beneath. It's going to take young explorers like you all to help us explore that and to get a better understanding of where it is that we live and understand this place we call home. Absolutely. So we'll be looking forward to hearing some of your questions now that you've heard from us here on the Nautilus. Wow. Thank you so much, Justin, Jennifer, Jason, Dominic, Sruthi, and Ashley for an incredible look into your work and for sharing why learning about key underwater cultural heritage sites is so important. Um, quickly, before we get kicking off with the Q&A, with the question and answer, um, I bet many of our viewers are interested in joining your mission. So a little call to action here. What can we do from wherever we are in the world to contribute to your cause? That is a great question. One thing we always tell people is educate yourselves on the water that you live around and exist in. All of us drink water every day. If we're healthy, we try to have a glass of water when we wake up in the morning. Understand where that water comes from. 
Understand where the water goes when you flush your toilets, when you take your showers, when you take your baths. Oftentimes, those are related to the oceans and lakes around us. And understanding that will give you a better understanding of, of the water of this planet. Absolutely. And if you want to be a storyteller, you don't have to travel to Hawaii or travel somewhere very far away. You can tell stories in your own backyard. I started by um, telling stories in my backyard in Florida when I lived there and just traveling out. You're an expert on the area where you live. So I encourage you to go out and help share the stories around you. Kip, are we doing any more or is that our last question? That was our last question. So sad, friends. But this has been a wonderful experience for all involved. And thank you again to the Maritime Heritage Team and the rest of the Ocean Exploration Trust Team on the Nautilus for taking the time out of your busy expedition schedule to be with us today. And a big thank you to all the students and teachers watching. We hope you join many more of our events. And teachers, remember, if you registered for more than one event in this series, the OET series, we will send you a special prize for your classroom. Please stay tuned for more information there. Make sure to join us tomorrow as well, October the 20th, as we'll be joined by Pristine Seas expedition leader, Paul Rose, one of the world's most accomplished science divers, to learn how the National Geographic Pristine Seas team is exploring the ocean and inspiring marine reserves and conducting scientific research. Make sure to register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash explore classroom and you can request a chance to be featured on screen and fellow teachers we've also created a new interactive guide for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests find the explorer mindset and action guide and teacher edition linked on each event registration page or in the chat box on youtube have a great day everyone stay curious and keep exploring